This Star Trek is really, they call it a reboot, but I really think of it as a prequel to the 1960s original series. Their younger days in the Academy, how they become the classic crew that we know. So you can settle for less than ordinary life. Or do you feel like you were meant for something better? And your father was captain of a starship for 12 minutes. He saved 800 lives. I dare you to do better. It's pure J.J. Abrams. I think J.J. is probably one of the more uh, involved directors I've seen as far as uh, all the aspects having to do with sound, having to do with the mix, having to do with music. He's a musician himself. He really wanted to be exciting, he wanted to be novel, but he also wanted to uh, pay homage to, to the original series. The challenge was how do we support the fan base that's familiar with the show, but at the same point bring something new and fresh, something that that makes sense in today's society and the level of where audio is in movies today. When Star Trek was a TV show, there was no sub. There was no 5-1. So for my job, when the Enterprise fired, it needed to be <laughs> You need the power. You need people to go, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Interestingly enough, at first, J.J. wanted it to be potentially silence in space and, and see how that was going to play. And so the first sequence we worked on was the opening of the film in the, in the Kelvin. And there was so much interesting action and visual effects and everything that was happening in space that we just felt like, we've got to do something with sound. And so we did put sound in space and we did articulate you know, all the weaponry and all the things that were happening. But even at that, there was an opportunity when one of the crewmen gets sucked out of a hole in the Kelvin to go to silence and to experiment with that silence a bit and see what it could do and use it to dramatic purpose, which I think worked out really well. And JJ, I know, was really happy with that. The design for the, the Enterprise door is such a signature sound that we've heard throughout the original series. And I wanted to make it sound, you know, that classic air... I was working on another project and we had recorded some uh, Russian toilet flushes on a train. And it was one of those air flushes that had just a really cool vacuum suction sound. And as soon as I heard it, I was like, this is the sound for the Enterprise door. So, I mean, that's, that's really what it is, is a toilet flush. The energized sound is from the original series. The beam is also from the original series. Uh, so there's a lot of original elements from the original series that the audience can recognize and they're familiar with. Energize. One sound that people seem to really react to are the warp booms. I have to give credit to Mark for that. Um, it was his idea that when the ships blast out, that they're accelerating so fast that it would be, you know, let's make it like a sonic boom. You know, I grew up with hearing sonic booms as a kid, and the fact that they just like disappear really fast sells speed to me. So why not try to make all of our ships, the Enterprise, the Jellyfish, the Narada, when they go into warp, make it just like this huge sonic boom. Phases fire everything we've got. Yes, sir. Originally, the weapons were created by like a zoob tube, you know, that kind of stuff. So I needed to look at that and go, okay, this is where it started from another generation ago. How do I take that and build on it? I uh, used guitars through martial amps, um, trying to get weird kind of tones. I used them kind of synths. I Dopplerized a lot of sounds. <laughs> I used people talking like when the ship came by, slowed down dialogue, so it would... So it goes down to give it some undulation, some modulation rather than, you know, just trying to give it some life, some fun.
Major Roddenberry did do the Enterprise voice on, on, on the film. Uh, somebody was able to go to her, to her house, with the list of lines that were needed, and she recorded them, and they're in the film. Authorization not recognized. Ensign authorization code, 9-5, Victor, Victor 2. Access granted. Anything from Majel's voice to some of the classic sounds from the original series are what's really endearing to people. And so you need to sort of, sort of pay homage to that in a certain way. We wanted to make it where it would hold up against any summer sound effect movie out there. And we wanted it to be exciting. And we wanted to redefine for new generation of, of viewers what Star Trek's going to be because this isn't the end. This is the beginning.